Yo, yo, welcome and thanks for joining. Once again, it's your boy FACE, fit on the ground, ears to the street, coming at you with a groundbreaking exclusive. And I gotta start this video by saying all praises to Allah for giving us the opportunity just to be out here today, man, moving and grooving, staying true to it, man. And I hope you all is staying true to yourself, man, being your best self, man. You know what I'm saying? So if you being your best self or if you making a a, a a real commitment to be your best self this week, put a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more motivation, if you want more news and reactions to public events. Uh, you know what I mean? Subscribe to this channel, man, because we always giving the people something to think about. You know what I'm saying? But this video is about a couple different topics, man. You know, and I'm going to make this real quick. You know, I got like a 30-minute drive. I got to go install a mirror at a gas station. So I thought I'd just tap in with y'all, see what's on y'all mind, pick y'all brain. And let's speak about a couple things that, you know, crossed my feed last night. One of them is um, AT&T being sued by the United States government for monopoly law violations. So if y'all heard about this, put a like on this video. If y'all familiar with some of this information, drop a jewel in the comments. Now don't just drop comments unless you dropping jewels or you giving some information or something that we can really benefit from. Cause we got, we got a small community here and I'm trying to grow the community. Inshallah to Allah. I'm trying to grow this community. And you don't got to just be in the streets. You don't got to just be a Muslim. This channel is for anybody and everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, this channel is about, you know what I mean, truth seeking and really digging into the facts and uncovering truth. You know what I'm saying? So what I discovered about this AT&T lawsuit that's um, underway right now is they're saying that AT&T was using cyber tactics and they was using tech industry tactics to block accessibility from other providers like any other smartphones like let's say it was an android and if you send one of your friends or family members a text message using an apple phone and they got an android phone and let's say you sent a video or a picture, the quality of the video or the picture might be less. Also, if you send in a text message, you won't have the ability to edit the text message. Once, let's say you make an error or let's say the mic pick up something in the background if you're doing a voice text and people talking in the background or you make a mistake because you type in or you might have fat fingers like me or your phone might just suck or you might have some cracks in your screen, whatever the case may be, but the text is not reading how you want it to read. Um, with an Apple to Apple text server, you can edit the text and make the corrections. But if the other user has a Android phone, you won't be able to make those corrections, which gives the perception as the Android phones are you know, not as good as Apple phones, but in reality, Apple has it set up like that. Also, they were saying that if you're making payments, if you're making payments to a third party, Apple will insert their self into the process and they're charging you and the other person. So if you want to keep your information private, Apple some kind of way will insert their self. And if I said AT&T uh, earlier, I'm not sure if I did or if I didn't. What I meant to say is AT uh, Apple being um, sued by the government. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, have y'all experienced these issues with Apple? I know I have because like I've had issues where, because you know, I'm a content creator and I might be using different apps to get my thumbnails together, to edit my videos. I might be using my computer, which is also a MacBook. I might be using my iPhone and my iPad at different times, and I'm all working on one video. And I'm using different apps to make all of this happen. I've experienced things like when I try to download a specific app, 
I notice on my car there might be a charge or multiple charges adding up to like $80 from all of these different apps that most of them I don't even use anymore. Or it might be um, it might be apps that's on other devices that I don't even have or not using. And some kind of way, Apple is just relentlessly uh, taxing my debit cards. You know, and and so I recently had to shut down certain cards and certain accounts. Hold on one second. Gotta take care of some take care of some business. So I had to shut down a whole lot of cards and a whole lot of accounts for the simple fact that AT and T is just not AT and T, but Apple. Not AT and T. Apple is just going into my account relentlessly, and when I add them up, it's like a hundred dollars a month in charges. Ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? So something else that's in the news that I want to talk about, and I want to get y'all opinion on, and it's the it's the current state of podcasting. I'm seeing a lot of male podcasters really gossiping, like gossiping almost like women, you know. Uh, 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 boom. Oh yeah. Okay. Drop this jewel up in this bank account. Alright. So anyhow, I'm like, I was thinking to myself, man, it's a lot of men who just all they do for a living is podcasts. And I know that was a big thing during COVID, but since COVID and currently, it's just like a podcast explosion. And that's why I decided to just um, back up a little bit Unless I really got something to offer the people No I'm sorry I keep going in and out But I'm dealing with this ATM And I'm uh, depositing some money Which I'm done now And I'm making sure it's the right bank account And uh, I hope y'all getting your finances right But we're going to talk about that in a second Um, Now it's not that all of the men are doing podcasts And that's not a bad thing But what the problem is Is the gossiping, the backbiting and not even really having the facts and when you dig into it you see that they're really doing it just for the views because they're getting paid by the views you know what i'm saying so i feel like that's really creating a saturation in the market one way but in another way it's a good thing the the bad way is it's a lot more people doing podcasting when it was a time in, in YouTube world where you could drop a channel and because it wasn't as many people doing it, your channel might be buzzing for whatever reason because you're dropping certain topics. Now with so many people, you really got to have the good content like Shannon Sharp or be doing interviews or really adding something that people can value for your channel really to pop. So that's the good thing about oversaturation. Oversaturation makes people work harder for your attention or for your time. And that's important when you want quality content. Because right now it's a lot of trash content. It's a lot of recycled content. And that's why I'm dropping this right now just to add some more content to my page, but something that people can actually value and something that separates my channel from these watered down channels, people that's not really offering you nothing. And that's what I'm seeing. Um, it's a lot of people in LA right now. Podcasting has hit a whole nother level of like when you mix the gang banging and when you mix all of the funk. Like if you see my last video, I was talking about Brick Baby having a meltdown at No Jumper. Okay. And then if you just pay attention to the YouTube streets, it's like five to 10 Los Angeles based podcasters who drop in content right now and some of them rock with each other some of them don't but they bring in they 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 gangs and also the politics somebody calling me and i can't answer right now and that's my ock man assalamu alaikum to my to my big ock aj you know what i'm saying i'm gonna call you when i get off of this uh video you know what i'm saying i already know what you want he wants some black seed you know what I'm saying? And if y'all want some black seed, go to www.bluntchamps.com. You're going to see a link for Abu's Corner. At Abu's Corner, you can get 
black seed, shea butter, uh, incense, car fresheners. You know, our channel is sponsored by Blunt Champs. You know what I'm saying? And Blunt Champs, they sell car fresheners. You can go to bluntchamps.com, get the car fresheners. You know what I'm saying? Because they support us and you should support them because they the reason why we could put this time and give you this new type of quality content. You know what I'm saying? So we not doing it, you know what I'm saying, for that YouTube money. We doing it to really reach the people that appreciate the content. And if you do, you can support us by going to www.bluntchamps.com. Get you some, some car fresheners. I think everything is under $10. You know what I'm saying? And if you get those products that's under $10, it's free shipping. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Think about that, you know. Um, outside of that, you could click on the link for Abu's Corner, and that's where you could get, like, the um, health and beauty products, like the shea butter, the incense, the sage, um, the car fresheners. You could get fragrant oils and black soap, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, check that out. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, back to the subject at hand, when we're dealing with these podcasters in L.A., and they bringing their politics into the podcasting world. How do y'all feel about that? Is that good or is that bad? Um, or what's y'all opinions? You know what I'm saying? Because I got a lot of opinions and I'm going to share some with y'all. I think it's negative. I, I think it's negative many ways. One way is going to be because it is. It's promoting a culture that is super destructive for young, impressionable minds i'm talking about the kids from 14 to 25 you know what i'm saying from 14 to 25 people are very impressionable and i think you know to be responsible if you into that gang life i don't really think it's something that you would want people to get into because back in the day and i'm you know i'm an og back in the day the ogs would tell the youngsters don't get involved in this go to school don't do this, don't do that. But it seems like somewhere, somehow, now they acting like it is the thing to do. And then by people being on media and they showing some sort of success, it might start to make other people, impressionable minds think that that's the way to success is by working your way up instead of like doing the work like education, keeping your record clean, keeping your driving record clean, understanding credit, understanding business, and getting yourself together like that, they might think they gotta do it the old fashioned way when the old fashioned way don't work no more. You know what I'm saying? So I think if I could say anything that could reach the hearts and minds of some of the people who host podcasts and stations, you know what I'm saying? I would say go ahead and tone down some of the gang politics and start getting into some of the things that are edifying. And that's going to be the word for the day because every time we drop these videos, we're going to do a word for the day. And the word for the day is edify. Edifying means to build something up, to better it either morally, intellectually, physically, or even spiritually. But to actually build something up and not destroy something. And what I'm going to look up and put into the comments is the opposite definition of edify. What is the opposite? And I'll tell you one synonym for the opposite of um, edifying is to be destructive. The opposite of building something up is to destroy something. So a lot of the gang culture, in my opinion, has destroyed more lives than it built up. And I could give you an example to that. When you look into the gang culture, you'll see the families it destroyed from the men that went to prison and the men that lost their lives, the families it destroyed. I could also show you with a lot of the money coming from, like back in the day, it was coming from like PCP, um, Sherm, cocaine, heroin. A lot of these um, gang members, they didn't have a gang of men who was going to work every day and putting their money into a trust and then investing in the community and sending people to college and stuff like that. They wasn't doing that. They was getting a gang of men together to do crime and they would extort business owners and they would also war for territory with other gang members. And then you would get law enforcement involved and that's a big thing in Los Angeles. You all know about the Rampart scandal and everything like that. We all know about Reggie Wright. We all know about Greg Caden. 
we all know about um, a lot of these men. I can't just off the top of the head think of their names, but they was involved in some of the worst stuff that you would expect police officers to be involved with. And even to these to this day, a lot of these men sit they 65 year old butts in chairs or wheelchairs and they talk about and glorify this, this old heyday when they was crooked cops and when they was criminals and it's like y'all ain't got nothing better to tell the, the kids when we sit down and listen to you speak as grandfathers and OGs that y'all talking about gang banging and I gotta talk about people like Mob James people like Reggie Wright them niggas could barely sit up in a chair and a few, and excuse me, but you know, when I say the word nigga, I mean my nigga. Just like the word nagas in Nigeria and Niger, it comes from an ancient African word that means king. So when you say nigga or nigga, it don't always mean a negative word. You gotta dip, get, get into the deep roots of stuff. But yeah, these niggas, these, these, these black kings, or they should be kings. They sit their butts in them old chairs talking about when they was with the with this click or that click or when they did this or did that. And they still add fuels, fuel to the fires of the social dysfunction. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'ma tag Reggie Wright. I'ma tag Mob James, uh, you know, uh, James McDonald, all of these dudes. And I'm gonna try to wake that game up. Like y'all got platforms, y'all got people that listen to you. Stop straddling the fence. Tell these youngsters that they should stay completely away from the gangs. They should go completely legit. They should really get their finances together. They should really get their lives together and do it like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what I gotta say, man. And um, you know, we're gonna build a little bit more. I'm not gonna get off here right now, but if you feeling and you stay with me this far, Put a like into that video because I'm really trying to grow this channel. And, you know, uh, shout out Blunt Champs, you know what I'm saying? But we finna get some more equipment to make these videos look better, sound better, and they'll be more attractive. And if I see y'all really rocking with me and y'all really rocking with the channel, I'm gonna step up the content. We're gonna step up this message, man. And we're gonna break some of these chains. We're gonna break some of these uh, mental chains you know what I'm saying? That these men and women got on their brains. We're going to break them with the truth. You know what I'm saying? And I don't got all the answers, but I got a lot of ideas. I need y'all to get into this with me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not doing this for likes and clicks. So if the video don't do crazy numbers, that's okay. Because it's not about quantity, it's about quality. And if I got the quality and the numbers is there matching the quality, that's all good. But if I got the quality and the numbers is low, but the quality is there, I'm fine with that. If I could really touch the minds and the hearts of somebody, and y'all could go out and touch the hearts and minds of somebody, this stuff could spread like wildfire. And what I'm trying to build is a whole new movement, a whole new mentality where we're not being controlled by religion. Even though the dean is not a religion, it's a way of life. But we're not being controlled by religion. We're not being controlled by miseducation. We're not being controlled by like witchcraft or somebody using external forces to control us, whether it's music, whether it's money, whether it's drugs. No, we're gonna be free men over here. So Baystar Magazine, let me share some understanding to what Baystar Magazine is. You know, a star is a beacon of light that shine in the midst of a lot of darkness. But with this light, you can truly navigate yourself in the midst of the darkness and reach a destination you're trying to reach. This, this, this beacon of light, it shines for the whole world to see, you know? And so Baystar is encouraging everybody to be a beacon of light in the midst of so much darkness. So the people who really trying to find their way, they might could glimpse some brightness and some, and some illumination from one of these stars out here and they can find their way. So we trying to uplift people. So if you a star yourself, like this channel. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you a star yourself. And we gonna shine brighter together. Cause when you got a, a sky and the firmament is full of stars, it's so beautiful outside, it's something to marvel. And some nights you get that where it's just no clouds and it's a bright night. And it's so bright because all the stars is out there and the moon is bright as well, alhamdulillah. So, you know, we're gonna talk about that. 
You know what I'm saying? I've been on here a solid 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this so I can focus on this road. I'm gonna get back on here tonight. You know what I'm saying? Drop some more jewels. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all got something to add to this, man, put it in to the comments. You know what I'm saying? If you got something to say about Mob James or uh, Reggie Wright and some of these older men who really ain't setting, you know, setting the bar high enough when it comes to the standards, then guess what? We got to sit up there and um, call them out, man. Call a spade a spade and call a diamond a diamond. Once again, it's your boy Abu Watson, a.k.a. F-A-C-E. Feet on the ground, ears to the street. Coming at you with another bank star exclusive.